Hello and thank you for joining me. It's time to play Vantage Master. Before we get started, we'll engage as usual in some analysis of the level and the enemy master. The first thing to note is that this mission will be always dark. That means that the knight type Nadiel's Marme and Dalmdaler will be more powerful than usual, and the day type Gwen Foss will be weaker. By extension, that means that earth types will be a little more durable than normal. Finally, in terms of master stats, we have equal speed and magic power, my master is more suited for direct combat, and his has one additional move point. We have the same Nadials and magic available, and that should be all, so let's get started. There may be limits to just relying on power, but I don't think we've hit them quite yet. Okay, so I discovered by experimentation that we already control the magic stone behind us. That'll save us a turn or two. Oh yeah, enemy master details. Um, let's see... Yep, this guy's got a ranged attack. The firing angle's small, so he can't shoot over things, but he'll still be able to deal some damage from range. Nothing interesting on the summon list, we already knew that. And Bless is our first magic. Bless costs 12 MP and heals all friendly Nadials by one point. That's honestly not that useful. Most of the time with most masters, you're gonna have something better to do. Now, in terms of the map, we've got a whole bunch of choke points here, and the way it's set up, the magic stones are really closer to us, and it'll be easier for us to switch between sides. The question is, which side and which magic stone do I want to go for first? I'm not really sure, but I think I want to try to grab that left magic stone before moving on to defending the right. My first summon will be a Dalmdaler. Dalmdaler will be more powerful on this map because of the knight effect, and, in addition, it will be hard for him to counter it because water units move slowly on land. And his response was to summon a Dalmdala of his own, not terribly surprising, so I'll move over there and just grab that magic stone. Now, I was originally planning on moving up and summoning something onto this magic stone to the left. However, I wasn't expecting him to summon a Dalmdala. It's not a surprise, but it really wasn't what I was expecting. Summoning a Reku over here will help me push the right side pretty easily, though. I'd really like to be able to prove that his Dalmdaler is out of position and unsustainable. While the enemy master does have a surprisingly high move speed, it'll be hard for him to switch back and forth to summon Nadials to support both sides here. Unfortunately, I will have to summon a Gwen Foss to help deal with that Aetherian. My forces have the cavern to the right blocked off, which means the battle is mostly going to take place near the top left magic stone. In that regard, a Gwen Foss's magic will be useful because it can hit past allied and enemy units. However, as you can see, the Gwen Foss is substantially weakened by the darkness in the cave. Alright, so what I'm going to do now with my Dalmdaler is trap his Dalmdaler in this small cavern. That will let me kill his Dalmdaler for sure, although it might take a little while. I don't really want to summon another Gwen Foss to deal with these two Earth Nadials because that would have two very weak Nadials on my side right now, so what I'm going to do instead is summon another Dalmdaler. Its magic should be able to deal some considerable damage to the enemy Earth Nadials. Meanwhile, my Reku can creep into position behind his Dalmdaler. There you can see the Reku's high speed in action. It gets two turns very close together. Okay, he moved his Dalmdaler back to defend the Magic Stone, which means mine should be able to go menace the other Magic Stone in the upper right-hand corner. So he plinked my master, who's in Prairie and therefore has some extra defense, and in exchange, seven damage from the Dalmdaler to an enemy Earth Nadial. My Gwen Foss can easily finish it off with that very nice ranged magic I was talking about earlier. In the absence of other threats or anything else to do, my master can finish off his Fire and Cell. So alright, my position is looking pretty good here. He's got three Nadials left, two of them are Rekus, and he's got a Magic Stone disadvantage. That means my Dalmdaler can easily prepare to capture his old Magic Stone, and my Reku can start plinking away at his Dalmdaler. Okay, so there we see something interesting. Even though the Reku was summoned after my Dalmdaler attacked, it was able to hit it before my Dalmdaler could move to retreat. That's because Rekus have really high speed. 
Unfortunately, his Dolmdaler moved around to threaten my magic stones. I summoned a Marm because I'd really rather get a healer on the field now, just in case, and also because it's night in the cave and the Marm will be more powerful. He picked up another Faran Cell, and unfortunately my Gwen Foss was not really able to hurt that Reku. I probably should have just saved the MP. Now my Dolmdaler has to retreat if it wants to survive, but that leaves my Gwen Foss in a kind of awkward position, with its defenses weakened by the absence of light in the cave. Those two Rekus will make short work of it if they get the opportunity. On the other hand, he's down to one Magic Stone now, and still has fewer Natials on the field. My Reku can trap his Dolmdaler out of the area with the Magic Stone in the lower right now. My Master will wait for more MP to summon next turn, and his Rekus are now going to start applying heavy pressure to my Gwen Foss. I decide it's better to give up the Magic Stone temporarily and retreat with my Gwen Foss to keep it alive. Unfortunately, it will still get attacked again, and I still have a wounded Dolmdaler here that has no targets. Since it's got nothing more useful to do, I'm just going to drop it on a Magic Stone to regenerate for a little while going ahead and trapping his Dolmdaler now in the empty cave. And I've got a bit of an interesting choice with my master here. I can remain in place and summon, I can move forward and attack, or I can move forward and summon something onto the magic stone, which I think will be the best choice. With my Faran Sal now on that magic stone, his Rekus are helpless to take it, and I think my position is looking pretty good here. That Dolmdaler on the right will die sooner or later, probably later if it keeps running away. With the nighttime power bonus, my Marm can heal 4 HP on my Gwen Foss. That'll give it just enough HP to survive another attack from the enemy Rekyu. And yeah, his Dolmdaler went and hid in the corner, that's kind of annoying. Oh dear, he's uh, trapped my master now in the corner with his Rekyus and dealt a little bit of damage there. Fortunately, I think I can just kill them pretty easily and then uh, escape. But I probably should have attacked the other Reku so that my master could have escaped sooner. That was probably a little reckless of me to attack the already wounded Reku. And even still, if my master was going to attack, I should have attacked the, uh, the lower one anyway. My Gwen Foss doesn't really have anything useful to do here, and I think the best I'm going to be able to do with it is just plink one of those Rekus for a little bit of damage. It's not looking terribly dangerous here, so I think my master can safely finish off one of those Rekus without moving, and therefore have a smaller wait delay before he can act again. Huh. I honestly have no idea why he cast Blast. I'm not sure if it's going to save one of his units from a potential attack, or if it just thought it had nothing better to do. Still not really much for my Dolmdaler to do here. Um, guess he'll just chill out and wait for more HP. My Marm can finish topping off my Gwen Foss, further solidifying my position. And okay, I didn't see that. Now my Master might be in a little bit of trouble here. Well, regardless, there's not much my Dolmdaler can do about it, so it'll just move to block the enemy Dolmdaler, and uh, I'll figure something out. So rather than healing my Gwen Foss, in retrospect, it probably would have been a much safer move to heal my Master with my Marmalade last turn. Farancel can't quite kill the enemy Reku, and I did have to yield that Magic Stone, because there's no other way I was dealing enough damage to that Reku to get my Master out of there. Unfortunately, my Master is now in grave, grave danger. The enemy master will move in only 14 minutes, fourth in the current turn order. My master moves second, but can't do much to save himself. My Gwen Foss moves just after him, which is unfortunate, because if it moved before him, it could kill the Reku and he could escape. So what I have to do is summon another Nadiel in front of my master to keep his master from just moving forwards and killing mine. Marmy is the obvious choice because they're extremely durable and it will be able to heal my master on its turn. Okay, next problem, what to do with my Gwen Foss. It's not actually much of a choice because I absolutely need to kill his Reku before it moves again or it will kill my master. However, killing his Reku also opens up the path for my other Marm to get to my master. Note that his Faran Cell can't move to the space behind my master because my Faran Cell is blocking it. 
finally, after hours of waiting, my Domdaler returns to combat to deal serious damage to his Far End Cell. And my Marm will finally move up and heal my master, saving him from almost certain death. My master retreats to safety, and that's one crisis resolved. However, I shouldn't have had to even try to resolve that crisis, because it could have been entirely avoided by taking more care with my master's safety. I've probably been taking it a little bit too easy on these earlier missions, and that's not going to continue. Risking my master in that kind of situation was a stupid mistake that shouldn't have happened. Well, regardless, it all worked out in the end. My master is safe, his master is trapped in the corner with my forces closing in from all sides, and I think it's safe now to call this a one game. That just leaves the annoying, annoying cleanup phase. I have no idea what his Domdaler is doing there, but it's not getting anywhere near my master. I'm running away. My master will remain safely tucked away behind a wall of Nadials. Hopefully my Domdaler and Marm here will be able to provide enough pressure to force him to yield that magic stone. Gwen Foss should be able to kill his Faron Cell now on its next turn. Unfortunately, my Domdaler doesn't really have much to do here, so I think I'm gonna just run it up there and see if it can kill his Faron Cell. It can't. Well, that was a little disappointing, and probably a mistake in retrospect. Fortunately, I have a couple of uh, other Nadials here to still deal with the enemy Domdaler. And hey, my Marmy leveled up! My Faron Cell didn't do too much damage to his Domdaler, but it did bring its health low enough that my Marmy can kill it on its next turn, which will force the Domdaler to retreat. Here we see an interesting trait of the Gwen Foss's magic. It can target across walls that things cannot fly over or shoot over. Interestingly, the enemy chose to use his Domdaler to deal a bunch of damage rather than save it from certain death. I think I actually prefer that, because getting it off the field will just help me finish this faster. Unfortunately, the enemy master has just parked himself in an inaccessible corner in Prairie. I am taking no chances with my master here. Regardless of the fact that there seems to be no risk, I will heal him to full health. Okay, the enemy has no more magic stones, which means he should be doing no more summoning, or maybe one more Nadial before I kill him. Unfortunately, the enemy summoned a Reku, which is going to take a while for me to kill, regardless of what I do. Oh hey, my Far Run Cell leveled up. Let's see what it gets. It looks like it gets some attack power and both defense and magic defense when it levels up. And that reminds me that my Marmy leveled up earlier, so let's see what those get when they level up. It seems that a Marmy gets extra magic power and speed. The speed will make it move more often, and the magic power may increase the amount of HP it heals by one. Nothing much for my Domdalers to do, but it's time for my Gwen Foss to show his worth again by hitting the enemy master through the wall. Now, I'd really like to summon an Aetherian here and start dealing some extra damage to his master, but unfortunately, I do not have enough MP. The enemy Reku moves forward and attacks, rendering itself even more vulnerable to my Nadial's counterattacks. I probably should just destroy some of these Nadials, but whatever. Dome Dollar will just wait to get more HP back, and oh man, he was able to summon another Nadial that's just gonna drag this out. I can finally summon that Aetherian, but I don't even know if it's gonna get a chance to move before this mission ends, given how slow they are. Because my Faron Cell is going to kill his Reku, opening up an attack route to the enemy master. At this point, I'm just waiting for my Dome Dollar to move again. But regardless of the fact that I anticipate victory, my Gwen Foss will still attack his Fire Ant Cell. Okay, it's finally my Domdeller's turn, and that's finally gonna wrap things up for this mission. Or maybe not, so I guess my other Domdeller will wrap things up for this mission. But first, we can see that when it levels up, a Domdeller gets increased attack power, magic power, and magic defense. Now, my Domdaler will wrap things up for this mission. And remember, there's no kill like overkill. The ninja has been vanquished and the mission is wanted. It's time to see what we've earned. Or I guess time to page through the after battle status screen for a few pages and then see what we have earned. 
the Awakening Wing lets us summon the Pellet, which I will introduce in the next video. That's a new Heaven Natty, all And we have gained one attack power, making our Master even more dangerous in melee combat. Our opponent for the next mission will be a crafty and powerful Sorcerer. The next mission also introduces a terrain complication that I'm sure you've all been looking forwards to. That's all for this episode, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching!